Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, game wrapped up about three, four minutes ago. Seattle taking the final couple of knees. And, uh, hey, two and two. Whatever you want to say about how bad this team has looked at times, two and two. Right there with plenty of other teams that are considered to be pretty good, like, I don't know, uh, the, the Ravens, the Bengals. So, hey, something is going right. And today, the thing that was going right was the offense. Good Lord, the offense. <laughs> and I, I, I got to say, this game, in some ways, went the way I expected. I said I didn't trust our defense and that our offense was going to have to carry a lot of weight. And they did. I didn't think they were going to be able to carry that much weight, however. Um, so 48 to 45, and uh, I mean, that that's kind of number speaks for itself. That's uh, shocking. That's a shocking stat line from a team that, well, well a game. For, forget one team or the other team. A game where you have Geno Smith at one quarterback spot and Jared Goff at the other with most of his best skill position players out. So, <laughs> crazy. It's uh, This this league is crazy sometimes. And, and you look around the other games in this league, and you see teams that are theoretically much more prolific offensively, and, and they're struggling to put up 20 sometimes. Like, how many touchdowns have the, have the uh, Buccaneers scored this whole season with Tom Brady? So, <laughs> um, just, just, Obviously, sh huge, huge shout out to Shane Waldron. He called a really good game. But these players, you go down the list on offense and you have to dig deep to find a guy to criticize. <laughs> I uh, Obviously, it starts with Geno Smith, who played an almost perfect game. And um, that may have been the best game of his career. I don't know. He didn't get sacked once. Very few incompletions made some big-time throws, converted some third downs. He he dug us out of long-distance, you know, down-and-distance situations. Just the best version. Of, maybe maybe that's not even fair to say. To call this the best version of Geno Smith, this is beyond what I think a lot of people, myself included, thought he was capable of. And I know that Lions defense is not good, but it doesn't matter. It's still an NFL defense, much like ours is technically, an NFL defense. So um, we, we got to talk about this offense, which has been motoring now for two games. So, wow. Gino, like I said, pretty much a perfect game. Um, the referees didn't help him much, by the way, either. Honestly, the, the intentional grounding call was a bunch of crap. Um, they were letting Detroit get a little handsy in their defensive uh, secondary, I thought. And he still, he still ate. Metcalf had the best game of his season so far. Awesome game for him. Uh, yeah, 150 yards. Lockett went off. Disley had a big game. All the tight ends getting involved. Eskridge, I mean, I, I, I get it, but at least he did something. At least he wasn't a complete zero out there, right? So everybody getting involved, everybody eating, Rashad Penny. I mean, forget about it. And a lot of those big carries that he had, a lot of the productive runs that he had to the outside. So... Hopefully we see more of that going forward. That's clearly an area where this team can do a lot of good damage. Excuse me. Uh, Penny had two long touchdown runs in this game. Both, I mean, he wasn't pounding it up the gut. He he, he t was taking it to the outside. He was running off tackle, outside zone stuff. Just hopefully we see more of that. That's really all I can say because that's Penny's game. That's Waldron's offense, and it worked beautifully today, and it felt like with one or two exceptions, every time we ran the ball to the outside, good things were happening. So, hey, that is the best you could have hoped for as a Seahawks fan from the offense this year, right? Well over 500 yards. Offensive line played really well. Cross picked up a couple penalties. Um, the interior of the offensive line still gets a little messy sometimes, but better. You didn't notice anything over the top bad, I don't think. Um... There, there there, are going to be issues because those guys are just not the best, but I thought they played fine. And and again, I understand. This is, this is, uh, this is life on easy mode against this Detroit defense, but I'm going to say it again. 
To those of you who are going to fly in here and say, oh, who cares, it's the Detroit defense, no. No, I would have been impressed if they had this game against air. I would have been impressed if they had this game against a bunch of toddlers. That 500 yards doesn't just happen just because the other defense is bad. It's still 11 guys trying to stop your 11 guys. So I'm happy with the way pretty much everyone on offense played, even Ken Walker. Ken Walker didn't have a very productive day. He averaged like three yards a touch, approximately. But I thought he played well. I thought, think there was some circumstantial stuff that got in his way. I think that there were a couple of plays that just kind of got blown up that were out of his control where I, I, I'm just... I'm just not going to kill the guy for it. And I, I think he continues to show that he has tremendous upside in this league. So down the line, man, how far down do you even have to get before you can even look at an offensive player and go, come on, dude, give us a little bit more. Maybe Noah Fant, but even Noah Fant caught a touchdown. And look, as good as the offense was, this defense, man, I, I mean, I, God, I'm not saying anything shocking here. Everybody knows, but the defense gets off to a nice start. They force some punts. They get off the field a couple times. They're getting a little bit of quarterback pressure. Not a lot, but a little bit, which to me is notable because this is a good Detroit offensive line. And to me, getting even a little bit of pressure is an improvement over what you've been doing the last couple of games. And... Honestly, nine of Detroit's points were on the special teams where you give up the uh, fake punt that leads to... I, I, honestly, I think it was OPI, but either way, you, you give that up and that leads to a field goal and then you have the locket fumble leading to a touchdown. That's nine points, most of their first half points. And then Tarikistan, who, by the way... Superstar in the making, it's really starting to look like. Like, once he works some of the little things out of his games that aren't exactly where you want them, he's going to be... It's looking like the all-pro path may be happening. Um, He gets the pick six, and it looks like it's just off to the races, and it looks like the defense is finally going to take advantage of an offense that has a lot of weaknesses. And for the rest of that game, they basically could have sat down on the turf before every snap and had about the same effectiveness so yeah um there, there's no way we can talk about this game without mentioning the fact that this defense is terrible and I don't know where to start with it you're playing a Detroit team with this many problems this many obvious issues and look even if I excuse the nine points in the first half as uh the fault of the special teams you, you gave up 36 points to a Lions offense missing their starting running back basically down to the nub at wide receiver. Like like in this game, uh, Quentin Cephas got hurt. I think Reynolds even got hurt, although he stayed in. And they're down to Monroe St. Brown. Blah, blah, uh, I'm not going to go through the list of guys who are hurt. You, you guys know. I don't need to explain that to you guys. I mean, it's, it's just a beat-up offense. And for that first half, I was like, okay, we're taking advantage. And I don't know what happened at halftime. And I don't know what's happening really in general. Well... I mean, in a if if you just want to talk about football stuff, eh, the defensive backs are really weak. They're playing off uh, way too many miscommunications in coverage. So many guys not getting passed off properly. Cody Barton is atrocious. Like like does not belong in the NFL. Josh Jones is atrocious. Does not belong in the NFL. But beyond that, where is this coming from? Because it was never this bad before. There have been years where our defense was pretty bad. There have been bad games from this defense, but uh, under Pete, they at least execute on the fundamental level. And look, you almost had it today. You you did. You almost had it. Um, the run defense, I thought, played better. The run defense was making some plays, and then boom, 51-yard run for Jamal Williams. Forget about it. And at the end of the day, you're still looking up and going, almost gave up a buck, buck 50 on the ground. And I'm just trying to figure out where it's coming from because obviously Pete Carroll's the coach but the new guys on in in town you've got uh Sean Desai and Clint Hurt calling plays are these guys not what we were hoping um 
the, it, it looks different, right? Like, it's not like when the defense was bad in previous years. It, uh, this is beyond. So I'm wondering about those guys just a little bit here. It's early. We've got 13 more games to go. But right now, this defense is only an NFL defense in the technical sense of the word. Like, this is a defense that if you can't find a way to stop the Lions with all their injuries that they have, how are you going to stop anybody? How are you going to stop Andy Dalton next week with no Kamara and no Michael Thomas, potentially? Like, what's the difference? Anybody who knows how to throw a football forward can beat you, it seems like. So, obviously, that's frustrating. This game should have been a blowout. This game should have been long over, long over by the time the fourth quarter started. And you let Detroit just kind of keep on clicking away three fourth quarter touchdowns, never let the game get into true garbage time. It looked like a game where you you were going to get into garbage time. Maybe we even see some Drew Locke. Maybe we see a little bit of DJ Dallas as a starting running back. Maybe you throw guys like Stone Forsyth and Jake Curhan and uh, Kyle Fuller out there because it's, it's just the game's over and you're trying to get it over with. No, <laughs> we never quite got there. But uh, hey, offense carried. Offense carried, that's all you can say. I kept thinking to myself, is this going to be the moment where we let this stupid game get away from us because um, we we kept sending Gino out there needing another score and there, was, there came a point where he didn't deliver. No, he delivered. He delivered big time. Every single time he dropped back, it felt like he was delivering. We had one drive in this game, I think, where we didn't score and it was a drive where we missed a field goal. <laughs> no punts. I think the announcer today said the Seattle Seahawks have never had a game where they didn't have to punt once. Like, that tells you all you need to know. Gino may as well, you may as well call him Peyton Manning right now. So, um, I'm happy. It was an impressive game. A lot of stuff to be excited about. Penny went off. Metcalf went off. Those are two guys who, as a Seahawks fan, you were kind of waiting for. And they reminded you they are still phenomenal football players. You just got to get them the ball. And I'm hoping they can keep that up going forward. I know that there are going to be people in the comments that are like, oh man, C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, uh, uh, Will Anderson. Uh, guys, don't, don't even worry about it, people. I'm not, interested in, I'm not interested in committing myself to some loser mentality of just trying to throw games. And honestly, I don't think you guys should be either. You got to be competitive. You got to be trying. You got to be putting your best foot forward. Realistically, I mean, if you look at this Seahawks defense, we're going to lose a lot of games this year. Don't worry about that. Enjoy the wins that you get. Enjoy this one. Don't get caught up in uh, CJ Stroud, da 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 da, uh, Bryce Young, who got hurt because, of course, he did because he's tiny. Don't understand why you guys like him so much, but that's a topic for another time. Um, 48 points. And some of the young players on this team were the driving force. Yes, there was Rashad Penny, who probably won't be here next year. Yes, Metcalf, we already know how good Metcalf is. But I thought Maffe played a good game. I thought Maffe was doing his thing. Woolen, pick six. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant forcing a fumble. Welcome, Kobe. <laughs> Shout out. Cross and Lucas. I know Cross had a couple penalties, but I, I still think he played pretty well. So... <laughs> There was a lot going behind this one, and at the end of the day, I'm glad the team is able to be so entertaining, and I'm glad they're able to find a way to win some games. And again, there may not be a lot of wins in the rest of this season, maybe. With the way this defense is playing, look, you can't ask Geno to do that kind of stuff every single game. You just can't. A lot of the time, when your defense plays that bad, you're not going to have a shot. But... I'm going to enjoy this win for what it is. I'm going to enjoy this win, and I'll let the draft take care of itself later. All right? I'd rather have some of the young guys who are on this team already play well and help me win a game or two instead of worrying about, oh, we need to lose every game so we can get a young guy, maybe, who will maybe be good. Okay? Horse before the cart. Okay, um, I'm going to watch these late games. I'll be streaming during um, Sunday Night Football probably, which um, I, I know is a ways down the line. But um, look, two and two. Like I said, man, two and two. A lot of teams that people think 
are going to be good this year. A lot of teams that will probably be good this year are 2-2 two and two as well. So we're not that far away in that regard. See you guys later. Go Hawks.